Hey guys, Silvio Guacamole here, bringing you another SPLX U game from week one. We've got Sage versus Rob Jr. here. Rob's on the scooters and Sage is on the bigs. So looking at team preview, um, Rob's got a pretty nice looking bulky offense team with what looks to be a Carmine Mega Slowbro, which actually has a really nice matchup here. Um, Shark could be annoying, but if he can keep it healthy, it can deal pretty well with Sage's team as the Latias could probably be Scarf. Um, even though it's a, it's a dying set, it's been used on HO a lot recently. Um, so if if it is Scarf Latte, it's gonna be that's gonna be a big threat. Um, there's a Rocks Cobalion. Um, it's probably either Specs, Curum and SD Roost Sizzle or Band Sizzle and Sub Roost Curum. Um, one of them for breaking power, one of them for just annoying other bulky offense teams. Um, Sage has a Grody Spikes offense with a band of Zydog, which is going to be interesting. Um, De Blade 2, which could end up getting out of hand here if um, Sage can keep rocks up. Um, so as the lead, we're just going to see Frostlass come out, easy, easy from Sage, and Rob's going to lead with the Frostlass answer and Defogger and Rotom. Um, so what we're going to see now is Sage can make a couple of plays here. Um, she could try and pivot out into Latias or the dog on Rotom because um, Rob either Toxics, if he has it, vaults or overheats here. Yeah, probably, we're probably unlikely to see an overheat come out um, because it lets in Lati and Zydog uh, pretty freely. So probably a Toxic or a Volt. Um, I think I'd probably Toxic here just because it punishes uh, Frostlass staying in because then you can overheat the next turn for a KO um, or you can try and play some games with Defog, Torn and Destiny Bond depending on what the Frostlass has. Um, yeah, I think I think Sage Sage's play here is either to, is to pivot out into one of the dragons and Rob should probably Toxic. They're both thinking about it. Rob for quite a while actually. I think if he has Toxic, he goes for it. If not, then I can then I can understand. I can understand thinking about this a little bit more. Um, yeah, Adam in chat saying that Salobro is looking like a big threat. Um, I I agree with him here. Um, Shark could win in the late game, especially if it's EQ, which it looks like it probably should be on this team. And we see Zydog come out, and we see a Volt Switch. Okay, nice pivot from Sage. Well played. Uh, yep. Yep, like that. So we're probably going to see, well, almost definitely going to see Slowbro come out here. Um, Slowbro or maybe Crook. Um, Slowbro is going to come out on the banded, on the banded Toxic. Nice play from Sage. Yep, that's really nice. Caught both Slowbro and um, and the Crocodile. So Slowbro, so Rob Slowbro probably just scolds here, or he could try and make a double out into into Crocodile. Um, that would cover the Frostlass, kind of cover the Frostlass coming back in. Um, but Zydog wasn't likely to stay in, so I understand him not making that play. Um, we don't see leftovers come out um, pretty much confirming that it's Mega Bro. Uh, there's no reason really not to run it on this team. Um, so Sage gets up her spike, finally. Uh, we, sh we should probably see Taunt here come out from Sage. Um, not really any reason to do anything else. I think getting a second spike is kind of greedy, and also if she has Destiny One going for that, is kind of greedy as well. Um, because I don't think, because if Rob attacks here, he goes for he goes for Volt. Um, overheat never comes out here, so we're probably either going to see a Defog, a Toxic, or a Volt here from Rob. Um, <laughs> I know it's not particularly specific, but um, it's kind of mind games really. We see Destiny Bond come out, which I don't agree with, and we see Toxic come out from Rob. Okay. That means that he can um, he can play games now with Defog versus Defog versus Volt. Um, Sage may try and predict that and pivot into pivot into the Zydog, which covers both options. So we see a spike come out on the Defog. Okay, okay. I think I think Sage is being really greedy here. Um, I don't think that was the player ever. I think you taunt. I think you taunt first. <laughs> yeah, I no I. I don't agree with that. I think I think you taunt, or if you or if you predict something else to come out, you go into the Zydog. 
Um, he goes into the Zydog. She goes into the Zydog now and catches the Toxic. Okay, Rob's Rob's playing really nicely. Um, that was a really that was a really good prediction from Rob. Um, he knew he knew the Volt Switch was kind of free, and knew there was an offer. There was a chance that Sage was going to predict that. She went into she went into Zydog on Rotom earlier. Um, so that's a really nice play catching catching that. Um, Zydog can can spam arrows pretty freely here. Rob, of course, never stays in. He just goes hard slow, bro. Here. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll probably just see a slow bro come out on arrows. There's no really re real reason for any of them to make any any other play. Um, so slow bro is probably either going to slack off or we're going to see a double out to crook here. Either play works kind of nicely. Um, yeah, crook also covers I don't know a potential latias coming in or something or frostless trying to come in get up get get up another spike as bro dies. Um, so I think. I think that's quite possibly the play for Rob, because then the next time the it, because even if um Zydog switches out, the next time that it comes in, he can cr pivot back into Crook again, um drop Zydog's attack and then go out to Slowbro, because even though Slowbro won't won't be at 100, it'll be at 80 or something, it'll still take two, banded minus one, arrows, so we just see Slack off come out on Cabalion, Sage trying to get up our rocks now, um. Rob probably Rob probably pivots into Rotom here. Um, yeah, I think that's probably more valuable than staying in and fishing for burn because you want to keep Rotom healthy as well because that um, the blade could be an issue. So you you want to get rocks off. It's kind of kind of intuitive, set, kind of um, counterintuitive sending sending it in to keep it to keep it healthy. But um, yeah, you want to keep off rocks. But Sage has the Sage has the tech. Sage has Taunt Cabalion, which is which is nice. Um, oh, and misses Focus Blast. That's really frustrating for Sage. While Rob connects Overheat, so that would have put Rotom at around 50%. I don't know the calc off the top of my head, but I think that has um, I think that has about a 50-50% chance to uh, to hit KO. So that would have been really nice if Rob had landed that, because um, this this Rotom also hasn't been revealed left uh, leftovers versus Ipapa or Wiki yet. Um, so that could have been really nice for Deblade in the late game. Although obviously for Deblade to win, you kind of need to get damage on the Crook first, and the Crook has to come in here because it has to drop the attack. So Slowbro can take another one, which puts it in range of um, which puts it in range of. A range of another attack from Z from Zydog if Zydog gets this 50-50 right. Um, what? Sorry, another attack from Zydog plus rocks. So this is a 50-50 here. Crook scarf. Um, Sage can try and stay in on a predict on a predicted pursuit and deal a huge amount of damage to the to the crook. Um, I mean it's it's a 50-50. So anything so anything can come out here. I don't really have any comment on what on on what we're likely to see. Um. To be honest, I think Rob. If I'm Rob, I probably click knockoff because I think he gets even, even if Sage switches, he does. She doesn't have a safe switch in for knockoff. So I think I think knock is probably the play here. Sage could could try and predict that and go into shark, but that's a pretty brazy play. Um, and yet we do see the knockoff come out. He would have got he would have got something from that even if even if Sage had switched. So I so I so I understand that play coming out. And um, we're just gonna see we're just gonna see Shark come out here. Um, probably an EQ or something's gonna come out here. Um, trying to predict the Cobalion or the Sizzle to come out. Um, yeah, this is this isn't looking the best for Sage. Although the Blade could still put in some work. Okay, it crunches, signaling that it probably doesn't have Earthquake because. Sage probably would have gone for it there, although she may have been slightly fearing Rotom coming in on an Earthquake and then pivoting out into, um, it's, sorry, and then Volt switching on the Latias into Crook to trap. Um, but if it's Scarf, yeah, which wouldn't be a fear if it's Scarf, so possibly not Scarf. But um, we see the Blade come out here on the Rotom. Uh, it's Taunt Volt Switch Cabalion, so it's Mono Attack, which is interesting. Adam saying it's not Redacted Shark, which probably means EQ. Um, yeah, so we're probably just gonna see a default come out from Rob's Rotom here. It's it's vital that Rob keeps um that Rob keeps rocks off here because otherwise this Dublade is just gonna annoy 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 Rob later on. Um we see a default come out here on Latias. 
Lati is probably, if it has come on, it goes for it. If not, just hard Draco here. Um, we see Sis come out on the Draco miss. Probably would have done about 25. So, well, a bit more. But um, it probably wouldn't have done a lot. Although these misses are slightly annoying for Sage. Um, also, something... Actually, no. Ignore that. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to see a U-turn come out here from Rob on the, the blade. Or possibly the... Nah, probably not for us last. Um, yeah, you turn command the blade's gonna do about four. Um, it will also reveal the reveal this set of sizzle. Um, if we see banded damage, we know it's also likely subris curum because I don't think you'd use banded banded sizz and then subris curum on the same team. So yeah, it does do four. I don't think that's banded damage, so I'm thinking it's probably specs curum. I might, I might be wrong though. I might be wrong on that one. Um, we see Rotom come out. This is the easiest vault. Yep, easy vault. Um, we probably see Sis come out. Yeah, because it's not, it's not safe going into the Crook yet. Um, and Crook is also really valuable for both the Blade and Shark. So we see U-Turn come out. Um, I think I would probably go Crook here. Um, getting off getting off potential knock damage is really nice um, because you have two solid anti anti shark measures in the back in Cobalion and Sizzle. Um, he does he does go right on though, which is a fine play. Um, and we're gonna see we're probably just gonna see another vault come out. Um, Sage is kind of caught caught in the vortex here, um, and she probably ends up getting out of this getting out of this pattern by sacking Frostlass, which is kind of the only way to the, the only way to beat this pattern. Um so just back into back into Latias on the on the overheat. Um not sure that I agree with the overheat play there. I mean Rob had Rob had solid switch ins for the blade even if Sage decided to stay in and get plus two. Um because you can go slow bro mega and and uh, do some damage there. And you're still you're you're still fine. You've got you've got 75% slow bro. Um, that's mega good. Even though it is toxic, it's still an okay to blade check, especially when you have Crook and Rotom and even Sizz in the back. Um, so we're gonna see a U turn out into Curum, um, signaling to me that it probably is Specs. I don't think I don't think Earth Power from Subroost Curum kills from here. I might, I might be wrong, but I don't think it kills. Um, we're probably going to see, in that case, probably see either an Earth, an Earth Power or a um, Ice Beam come out. If Ice Beam two at Kios, he probably Ice Beams. But we see a Hidden Power Fire come out. Okay, nine percent doesn't seem a lot. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's not Specs. So I'll have to, I'll have to calc that. But um, anyway, Latias comes in. We're just going to see. Sizz again most likely on probably another Draco. If he has Sizz coverage, he clicks it. Um he could even trick here, but that that's that makes Crook really annoying because then Crook can just come back in, pursue trap the Latte and click EQ three times and win the game. So that's probably not what we're gonna see here. We just we do just see a Draco come out. Um this is where this is where the Draco miss um kind of ten turns ago would have been slightly annoying for Sage because the sizzle would have been forced to roost a turn earlier. Yep, it is roost. Um, which would have meant that Sage could, could rustle back the momentum slightly earlier. We see Kurum come out here. Um, fine play. Either just sacking or... Oh, it's leftovers. Okay, so it is sub-roost Kurum. Sub-roost HP fire. That's an interesting set. Um, in that case, I'm not I'm not too sure how much I like Rob's team because it does kind of struggle with some initial breaking power, but um, with kind of with stuff like Curum, Come on, Bro, and SD Sizz and SD Cobra, that's that kind of offsets that. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure how much I like it. I feel like maybe he could have gone to rack SD Rock SD Rocks Roxy to rack and then another. And then another measure for for Sizz if he wanted some extra great extra breaking power, but um yeah so we see the Iron Head come out on the on the HP fire that leaves Sage's the blade at one so we're gonna see a Volt come out here okay easy plays um and it's just gonna be Sizz coming in again I imagine 
Um, he doesn't want to go into Crook and risk the Scarf Draco. Although he could potentially, I don't know, go Crook and then double out into double out into Sizz to see if he wants to switch out. Because if he does switch out, that would reveal it wasn't it wasn't Scarf, which mean that which would mean that Crook would have a really easy time. But I don't think that play is worth making. Okay, it is Scarf and it goes for Healing Wish on the U-turn. The Blade comes back in. Okay, that's this is really nice for Sage because now the Blade is looking like a huge threat. Um. If he can, if he can somehow hack his way through the through through the Rotom, um, I don't know. Perhaps he could crit Rotom. Or that. Mm, looking back on it, it's not looking like that big a threat. He needs he needs a few SDs to be able to do any damage. And uh, although a miss from Rob here would not go amiss. No, no pun intended. But um, yeah, a miss would a miss would be fantastic for for Sage here. And Rob hits, um, effectively ending the game. Because Cobra can just come back in and click the easiest. Oh no, um, he can go. He can go into what's it called? Um, the crook. So interesting enough, this is either a Carmind, Carmind Cobra with no flash cannon, or it's a flash cannon Cobra. Um, it's just three attacks, rocks, which is an interesting set either way. Um, so we're just going to see uh, just going to see a bullet punch come out, um, and then a U-turn on the shark, which is going to end this game. Um, Rob Rob wins. This probably has enough. Okay, all right. Z bug. Okay, all right. That's that does help somewhat with the breaking power issue. Um, so we're just going to see a BP come out here, and that ends the game. So Sage and the Bigs lose this week. Rob Scooters won this week seven five, um, and then they also won the next week as well. So the scooters are doing pretty well. Bigs are doing okay. I think they're one and one. So um, yeah, I've been Silvio Guacamole. Uh, see you guys. Cheers.